Hello, welcome to a new video. Um, I'm going to apologise right now because my throat isn't great. So my voice sounds horrendous. Um, this isn't me looking for sympathy. This is me talking facts. Um, I feel fine. I don't, I don't know. Like it just isn't liking me right now. Um, and also it's really warm. So I have my fan on. But today we are doing a tag video. I go on holiday very soon. So I needed a quick and easy video <laughs> to get done. So this is the book recommendations tag. Um, I was tagged by the lovely Andy over at Zebra Reads. And the original creator is Steph Bora. Um, so there are 20, 20 questions you're gonna see one book in particular a few times and nobody's gonna be shocked um so i have the books in front of me i have the questions um so let's go number one a book you tell people is your favorite are we shocked that we're seeing the love hypothesis by ali hazelwood this early on in the video um not to spoil but this will feature multiple times again um i at first had this for like almost all the prompts i was like no and I, I need some like options i can't just have the same book so but this is my favorite book i love this book if you didn't know that i don't know where you've been <laughs> number two is a book that is your guilty pleasure i don't have guilty pleasures i'm not ashamed of anything I read but I'm I'm gonna do this based on a book that I know a lot of other people class as a guilty pleasure um I don't but we're gonna just roll with it um Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon it's Blue Alien Pool that is literally what this is um but I am six books into the series now of 22 books and I absolutely love it I don't care what people think I love this series, but I know a lot of people class this as a guilty pleasure series, so I'm just going to use it for that option. Number three is a book that everyone loved, but you didn't. Um, for this, we're going to go with Beach Read by Emily Henry. I despise this book. Um, I could have actually held up the book because I still have Chloe's copy, but I forgot to grab it. Um, I hated this book. And I know that it's not one that everyone loves, um, but a lot of people love this book and no, I just weren't about it. Number four is a book you read the fastest. So I've read quite a lot of books pretty fast, but I thought I would go, I'd give a bit of a throwback because this book I originally got from the library years ago before I properly got back into reading and I literally binged it in about two three hours with no audiobook and it is Simon versus the Homo Sapien Agenda by Becky Avatelli I know I'm holding up Love Simon but I refuse to call it that because that is the movie's name not the book name but it was really hard when I was buying my own copy of this book it was really hard to find the original title and I can't I can't replace it now because it's signed, personalised, and has a doodle from Becky Abertali herself. So, yeah. But I love this book, and I just devoured it. Number five, a book that deserves more hype. I'm never going to stop shouting about this whole trilogy, Stolen Time by Danielle Rowlands. If you haven't read this book, please read it. It's set in a futuristic earth where Seattle the is like living way above what they are now because the sea level has risen but there's time travel and it's like a dystopian vibe and it is just incredible i love this trilogy this is the first book obviously um but yeah i just no one ever talks about it and it makes me so sad because it's so good number six is a book that is becoming a movie or tv show we're going to ignore the fact this is the first book in a sequel series but it's still the same world um percy jackson by rick royden the way my shelves are the books i've read are at the back 
and the books I haven't read are at the front. I did not have the energy to pull all of the Heroes of Olympus books out just to get to the first Percy Jackson book. Still Percy Jackson, it's like, you know, still Percy Jackson. But Percy Jackson, I'm very excited. December 20th, it's coming to Disney Plus and I cannot wait. Number seven is a book that you reread the most. I told you you was going to see it again. It's a love hypothesis. I literally read this six times within a year and I've only read it once this year. I'm slacking. Wait, have I read it this year? I don't think... I'm going to need to read this again soon. Number eight is a book from a genre you don't typically read. Something is Killing the Children by James Tinney and the Fourth. I don't tend to read much horror. I have a few horror books that I have read and I do want to read, but it is not a genre I go for. But this series is everything. I am obsessed. N number nine, a book that deserves all the hype it gets. There are so many I could I could do for this, but it's the love hypothesis again. I did say you would see it more than once and you're going to see it again. I'm not even sorry. Um, number 10 is a book you usually recommend when asked to give a recommendation. Um, I'm going to be honest, I'm not giving you a book right now because it fully depends on the person. Like if the person likes romance, then I'm going to give them love hypothesis. If they like fantasy, it's fully going to depend on what type of fantasy is their go to. Like, what sort of tropes do they like? I'm not just going to pick one book out of a hat for everyone and give them it. So, I can't really answer this one. Okay, number 11. A book that has your favourite characters. Um, so, it's not one book in particular. It is all of the Shadowhunters books. My favourite characters are Simon, who is a main character in this series and then is also in other series. Um, Jem Carstairs, who is one of the main characters in... The Infernal Devices, and then he features in quite a lot of the other books. And all of the Blackthorns, who are part of the Dark Artifices. So, yeah, just all the Shadowhunters books have my favourite characters. Number 12, a book you wish you could live in. I'm going to be honest, none really. Um, I don't think I would want to live in any of the fantasy worlds that I read. Um, because I would not survive. I wouldn't survive. Um, contemporaries, why would I choose to live in that world when I already do? Like, if I'm if I'm moving to a different world, it's not going to be one that's exactly the same as this one. Like, no. Um, and sci-fi, I don't like the idea of space travel. I, it, it terrifies me. So, no, no. <laughs> Number 13, a book you thought you would hate but ended up loving. Um, one Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. I am not a slow burn fan. Do not like slow burn. This is an exception. I absolutely adore this book. And whilst everyone is on the red, white and royal blue hype, which don't get me wrong, I enjoyed that book. But while they're on that, that hype, this is my favourite. Th this is better. Like, I know people don't agree with me on that. That's fine. You're entitled to your, input, your opinion. My opinion is that this one is better. I love it and I am still shocked to this day that I loved it as much as I did because slow burn is not my thing. Number 14, a book that made you cry. Honestly, most books, most books, but two of the most recent ones and they're not for reasons you would think either. Like it wasn't sad crying. Um, we have Imogen, obviously, by Becky Albertalli. This was a nostalgic cry. Um, it was very much, uh, I have been in Imogen's shoes and it was a very therapeutic nostalgic cry and i just loved it so much and then the other one is book lovers by emily henry i don't know if it was because i was feeling overly emotional at that point anyway because of my like when i read it because my mental health was not great um but there's like talks of long distance relationships and just everything about it from like the friendships to the like family relationships to the romantic relationship 
just my heart I was sobbing full-on sobbing at this book um so yeah um, number 15 a book you wish you could read for the first time um I just want the pure joy that this book I mean to be fair every time I reread this I still get that pure joy from it but there was just something about that first time reading it finishing the book and loving it so much that I was crying because I loved this book so much and I had so many feelings about it so yeah I would love to reread this because as much as each read of it gives me joy that has not happened since because I know how much I love it now so it's not a shock um number 16 is a book that could cure a reading slump right I'm holding up love hypothesis but honestly any Ali Hazelwood for me will cure a reading slump instantly I was starting to slump a couple of months back and I reread an Ali Hazelwood and I got back on my reading game they just make me happy and it's like a brain reset I love it number 17 is a book you think everyone should read now the book I'm going to hold up I would say if you're going to read it look up trigger warnings because it gets quite heavy at times but it's the places i've cried in public by holly bourne and i don't know if it's just like because i've had personal experiences similar to some of the things the main character in this has to go through um but i do genuinely think it's a book everyone should read especially teenagers because it's so hard to spot red flags when you're especially when you're that young and naive and I feel like this book really shows it and I'm just like I wish I'd had this book when I was a teenager number 18 is a book you think would make an amazing movie so usually I would say none to this answer because I don't trust anyone to make films they're gonna ruin all the characters like no stop it but on this occasion, I am actually going to say Dry by Neil and Jared Schusterman. I think this would work really well as a film or a TV show. Preferably a film. I think, I don't think there's enough for it to be a TV show, but I think this would work really well as a movie. And I would love to see it on the big screen. Like, especially considering it focuses on like droughts and stuff. And like, honestly, scarily like, like I read this I've said this so many times now but I read this when the UK had like 40 degree weather and like we had like droughts and stuff and I know it's been worse than that in some other countries but when you live in a ridiculously rainy country um that was scary like you would go into a, a store there would be no bottles of water none at all um so yeah th i think this would be great as a movie number 19 is a book you wish everyone would give a shot even if it's out of their comfort zone so whilst usually i would not recommend reading a book out of your comfort zone because you can risk putting yourself in a slump um i try and sometimes read out of my comfort zone but only if i genuinely think i'm going to enjoy the book so for example for me i don't read historical fiction unless it's got fantasy in it but i read the first book in the six tudor queens series because i'm obsessed with six the musical which i don't know if you knew that um, and i ended up really enjoying it but there was a reason i was willing to go out of my comfort zone however this book is one that i think whether YA fantasy is your comfort zone or not, read Spellbound by F.T. Lukens. It's a very light fantasy, so if you're not big on fantasy, it's set in our world. It just has a bit of magic in it. Um, it has, like, mystery vibes. It has a cute romance and friendships and all that good stuff and I just think it's a really amazing book and I want everyone to read it um and I definitely think it's one worth stepping out of your comfort zone if YA fantasy is not your comfort zone so yeah and the final question question 20 is a book you'll never forget I honestly so many obviously <laughs> don't love how bothers us um but honestly so many there's the 
Throne of Glass series. I'm never going to forget those books. It's one of my favourite series. The Shadowhunter series is like one of my favourites. There are so many. So many. But yeah. Um, that is all the questions. Um, I'm going to tag a few people. Um, obviously, as always, if I've tagged you, don't feel like you have to do this. I just it's the tags there if you would like and if I haven't tagged you but you would like to do it please feel free to do this this is me tagging you um but I am gonna specifically tag Chloe at Chloe Reads Books Chloe at Persistent Bookworm and then Gem at Bookish Gem I was gonna tag Lisa but Andy got there um so yeah I hope you've enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time bye